Welcome to the SPE Podcast, powered by the Society of Petroleum Engineers. You're listening to the April 2024 episode of the SPE President's Podcast with Terry Palish, creating our energy future, how members can help improve the industry's public image. And now your moderator, SPE Senior Manager of Communication and Energy Education, Paige McCowan. Hello, I'm Paige McCowan, Senior Manager of Communications and Energy Education at SPE. I am pleased to join the 2024 President Terry Palish on his monthly podcast episode. This month, Terry will focus on how SPE engages with our external stakeholders, and more importantly, how we can help improve the industry's public image through programs like Energy for Me. Hi, Terry. Good morning, Paige. It's great to be back with you. I think the last time we spoke was at uh, my second episode in October. It uh, was. So a lot has happened since then. I think we've had uh, five episodes, four or five episodes. Um, and of course, the goal of all along, uh, as we kind of talked about in September, was to try to help our members create their energy future. And in particular, uh, how to use their SP membership to do that. Um, so this month, like you said, I wanted to talk about something that I think is is really pretty critical to our future. And it's not just our future, our members' future, or even SP's future, but I think it's important to the industry and one could argue humankind's future. I'm really glad you're talking about this, Terry. Obviously, um, this is something that's close to my heart, but also the members. I hear members talk about this um, a lot. So what what are the public image issues that face the industry? Well, look, first of all, I agree with you. Um, it's probably one of the most common questions I get as I travel um, is, you know, I get the question of what can SP do to help our image? Um, in fact, uh, if we go back to our strategic plan that we put together a couple a year and a half ago, um, it was it, well, our public image was one of the top five uh, concerns by our membership, um, along with how are we going to attract the next generation? And I think those are go hand in hand. So, um, look, I, I think we need to remember our industry has had a, always had a lot of environmental scrutiny. Um, some of it is is well deserved. Um, but one thing I want to just point out is I don't think I've ever met anyone in our industry who's not concerned about the environment. Um, In fact, arguably, uh, most or and a lot of our members maybe joined the industry because this industry is an outdoor type industry. I mean, what we do is is out on on platforms and on on out in the in nature. And so most of us come from an environmental background. And so we're certainly concerned about the environment. But of course, today, uh, the biggest pressure we're getting is on uh, climate change and the global warming that's caused by the emissions that's generated by the products, the combustion of the products we produce. And those are all valid concerns. And there's something that we are concerned about. And I think if you talk to anybody in our industry, they're working on. But unfortunately, we rarely hear about the benefits that our industry is bringing to humanity. Um, You know, the benefits that oil and gas provides, um, whether it's energizing nearly everything we do in every industry that's out there or just in all the the petrochemicals and the everyday products and conveniences that are made from oil and gas um you know our our products fuel and impact almost every aspect of our lives and i think that's the message that we kind of need to continue to get out there um you know i won't i won't repeat what we talked about in september october but again quite literally we save lives uh and better humanity The other thing is, as I've said before, you know, I still believe uh, passionately that our industry is best positioned to solve today's energy challenge. Um, And the energy challenge, of course, is continuing to meet humanity's desire and need for affordable and accessible, reliable and secure and green and decarbonized energy. So that's the challenge. And I think we're up to it. But there's really two big problems that come into play if we want to meet that challenge when it comes to public image. And the first is if if we want to solve this trilemma or this challenge, then we're going to need the best and the brightest entering and staying in our industry. Um, and so if we don't have that, then we won't be able to solve the challenges. Um, and then the second is just investment. Um, some might argue that our industry has been underinvested in the last several years. Um, but if, you know, if our image is not not good or, or, or worse, we're demonized as a, in the public, then we uh, we may lo- reduce our investments in our tech uh, in the companies and in our technology. So it's just really important that uh, we that we address public image. Um, I think 
humanity, maybe even you could argue the planet depends on us to keep doing what we do and meeting that challenge. Yeah, you're you're definitely right there. And I, I like the point you make about people in the industry being um, uh, concerned about the environment. A lot of people think, as you said, that that we're not. But um, it is an ongoing problem and it's a huge undertaking. But what can we do to change public perception? Yeah, of course, that's the million dollar question. And that's what's on the question on everybody's minds. Um, let me just give you a few insights. I was in February, I was at IPTC in uh, Dharan, Saudi Arabia, and we I served on the president's panel. And, and this panel was made up of the presidents of the four sponsoring societies. So AAPG, EAGE, SEG and SPE. Um, and we <laughs> the title of it was, you know, discussing strategies for attracting and retaining the next generation. And so a lot of this was tied up into public image and, and public perceptions. And some of the points that, that kind of came out of that panel was, first of all, we, we really need to engage students at a very young age. I think a lot of times we think in terms of college um, and university, but we really it needs to go down to at least the high school and if not the middle school and grade school level. So that's the first. And the reason that's important is because actually it kind of steps back from that. And that is just getting students into STEM programs period. Um, in many areas like the U.S., STEM, STEM enrollees are declining already. That doesn't, that's not petroleum engineering, that's just STEM. So it starts young. Um, and then, of course, then we, of course, as they get older, we start to uh, help them understand the benefits of our industry and what it brings to humanity. Um, the other thing that we kind of talked about is sometimes we get caught up in kind of our image of of what we portray ourselves and we do a lot of really cool things and look if you're a young student and you're trying to figure out what career to go into you're going to be wanting to do high tech and things like that and we do that every day so i think that's a big part of it um and then the last thing is you know we really need to engage uh, our teachers guidance counselors you know your friends and your family the people that you work with and you know one of the points i made at the end was that i think the most important thing our societies can do um and or the companies they work for is to improve to or t the most important thing we can do to improve our public image is to equip our members or equip the em their employees with the tools they need so that they can go out and engage students you know, and teachers and their friends and family on the benefits of what we do. What we do is neat and cool and high tech. And and I think that's where we start. I mean, we have 127,000 members worldwide and 127,000 members can do a lot more than a single entity. So I, I see that as our critical role at SPE. Yeah, you're right about that. I completely agree. I believe focusing on students and teachers is a great way to reach out to the communities we live in and to share knowledge. Um, so how is SPE equipping our members and what tools are they are we using? Yeah, so it all starts with energy for me. Um, that's our global educational outreach program. It was actually launched probably almost 20 years ago. Um, and it really provides, you know, what I would guess I would term an exploration and production curriculum. Um, and it's something that we partnered with NEED, which is the National Energy Education Development Project to develop. Um, and the energy for me, if you go onto that platform, you'll see there's a lot of discussion about our industry and the positives, but it has uh, a lot of hands on activities. And these hands on activities teach the science behind our industry and maybe try to demystify some of it. Um, the cool thing is it's in, translated into seven languages, so you can it's it's easily deployable to our global membership. Um, you know, some of the activities that we have in there are, are simple ones, maybe that discuss density or show what porosity means. And there's also some more sophisticated that talk about enhanced oil recovery um, and perhaps perforating well casing, things like that. So. That's that's I would say the major portion of what we we do. Um, the other part that's the I would call the the hands on part. And then of course we have a, a book that we uh, published with DK Publishing uh, in about fifteen years ago called the Oil and Natural Grass Book. I have it on my desk here actually, um, and that book is is basically to help. If you go through that book, it really helps you understand how do you convey what we do, why what we do is important to kind of the talking points that you can give to your friends and family. And it, too, is translated into multiple languages. Uh, so uh, we have that opportunity. So I would say it's it's a twofold tools, uh, energy for me and then that book. 
Yeah, it's a great program. Um, I'm a little biased, but I think it's a, an awesome <laughs> program. Um, and I know a lot of our section and chapters are very active in it. So how is SP deploying the program? Well, I guess first and foremost, the easiest thing is it's it's on the Energy for Me website. And, and I think, of course, the idea there is somewhere for our members to go and see the activities and look at the, the material and stuff so that they can go out. As far as SP itself, though, um, you know, we've been holding teacher and student workshops at SP events around the globe for quite some time. It actually kind of started at OTC Houston. And now I would say most of our tier one or our flagship events have some sort of energy for me activities associated with them. Most of the time, I think you're helping run them. Um, they've, we've educated thousands of students and teachers. I think some might estimate 30,000 or so, but it's it's been quite a few across the world. The other part of this then is um, in 2020, during the pandemic, of course, as SP was trying to pivot into the virtual space and started things like SP Live, we also started something called the Energy For Me Ambassador Program. Uh, and that ambassador program focused on virtual training for our members. And, and so we didn't lose momentum on those on the Energy For Me program. Um, I think we you've estimated that we've probably trained about 1,500 members. Um, and we think probably about 20,000 students in their communities have been reached on that program. So that's the key aspect here is I think we have it's a partnership. It's our members accessing the website and doing things in their sections and things. And then there's also SP itself who is deploying it at events. Yeah, I think we've had some really good success with this ambassador program. Um, a lot of our members are very engaged and want to be a part of it. Um, so are there any opportunities for corporate involvement? What we've talked about is really about members, but what about corporate involvement? Yeah, I think we're just kind of touching the surface of that now. Um, in, in 2022, we started uh, an ambassador program for companies. And so the idea was to work collaboratively or engage with uh, various companies, corporate social responsibility groups or whatever they call it at their particular company um, and work with them to see if there's ways that we can use the energy for me activities to align with their goals. Um, so we've had a few great examples. Um, Exxon Mobil Malaysia and India, they've sponsored an energy for me student STEM workshop. Um, they've trained their employees on how to conduct these workshops. It's now an annual event. Uh, EOG Resources in Houston, um, every year they have a training program with SPE to sponsor and participate so that in the spring break STEM camp in Houston, um, Aramco's America's in Houston. They also are the ones who sponsor OTC and ATCE, uh, the STEM program we talked about. We teach a workshop that we talked about before. Um, and then we've done things with SLB, VP Chevron and what. So that's, like I said, I think that's just getting started. Um, and we've got a lot of really good momentum there, but hopefully we can continue to expand that and work with companies. Yeah, it's, it's great to get the companies involved because a lot of them are doing something in our communities. So it, this program makes it easy for them to to, to do outreach. Um, speaking of that, so what are some of the unique ways our sections and chapters are using the program in their communities? Well, you know, as I go out and I talk to sections and chapters, there's a lot of times I get to hear about some really cool programs. Um, and there are, there, there's, a, there's a whole wide range of things out there. Um, the Calgary section, for example, their YPs organize an annual family science day. Um, it's kind of aimed at educating students at, about oil and gas and, and putting on fun experiments. And they do a lot of the activities from Energy for Me. And one of them that's really the fan favorite, if you will, is the fracking with jello experiment. Um, for those that haven't ever seen that, go on Energy for Me and you'll see that. But uh, Calgary Section is actually kind of known for that uh, particular experiment. Um, maybe going down to Ecuador. Ecuador has a real structured Energy for Me program um, where they're training children and, and young people in the communities that surround the areas where they uh, operate oil and gas. I mean, 2023 alone, they reached four schools, 2,500 students, 5,000 hours of training and 2,000 hours of volunteering. Um, and the, the cool thing is it's not just the members. They're also including the volunteers from the student chapters to help with that as well. So it's a partnership. Um, moving over to Brazil, um, Brazil section every year has an award. It's called the Energy for Me Special Award, and it recognizes the students and the YPs that had the best performance in going out and training uh, secondary and elementary students. So that's kind of cool. Um, 
last year I visited the Aberdeen section when I was at Offshore Europe and they had a really interesting program. Every year they try to have a workshop at Offshore Europe and typically it's been for teachers. This year they did uh, something for guidance counselors um, because they saw, you know, the guidance counselors are the ones who are really giving advice to the students, high school students, on what to study. So they had this workshop at Offshore Europe where they they educated them on our industry and the jobs and the things we do. Um, and it really went well. It, it was very well received. The Gulf Coast section, uh, they have a high school STEM education tutoring program where they're placing uh, their, their volunteers um, in classrooms. I think they've reached three Houston schools last year or, or over the years. They put in like 80 hours a month and the program's been going on since 2013. So that's pretty neat. Um, KSA section, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, they also have energy education programs. Um, they take elementary and high school students out to visit rock outcrops. Um, so that's kind of neat. And, and again, it gets the students in a hands-on uh, situation. Uh, how about the Oklahoma City section? They have a program now called Engineer for a Day. Um, where they bring in high school juniors and seniors. I think it's actually happening in, in uh, or it's, it happened in February, um, where they're bringing in uh, these high school students and they get to f uh, shadow uh, members of our industry for a half day and then they all come together for a citywide luncheon. And there's others, um, maybe just a couple more. The Drillbotics program, it's not necessarily an energy from reprogram, but the Drillbotics program is an engagement we do at the university level where we engage university students and teams at the universities where they compete and they do some really sophisticated things. They, they have to drill a well into a rock that's been provided to them. Um, and what's really I like about this program, and it's been around for a while, is it, it doesn't just involve petroleum engineers. They have to work collectively with other disciplines as well. So they bring in a mechanical or electrical or a computer science to solve the problem. Um, it's, a, it's a huge ambassador program for our industry. Um, and let's not forget, lastly, uh, you know, our, our almost all of our sections give away scholarships on some level. Um, I think last count, and I don't think it's complete, is, you know, we, we gave away like a million dollars uh, overall in 2022. So um, I think that's all hugely important. Um, look, every section does something, it seems like, and it's I could go on and on, but I just think it's this is where the real effort is going to happen. Like I said before, SP can do one thing, but our members out there in our sections and, and our chapter, student chapters are doing things. So it all has a positive impact on our image. Yeah, you're right, it does. And you know, when I hear these stories about um, what our sections and chapters are doing in the community, I just see the passion that they all have for what they do and they wanna share it. So what advice can you give our members to help them get the most out of these programs and why should they participate? Well, let me just echo what you just said. When I meet and visit sections and chapters, student chapters, I was there, yeah, like I said, in February, I was in, at IPTC and I got to meet the sections and student chapters there. And they're just all super excited about what they're doing, particularly in their outreach. Um, but as far as what uh, members can do, um, look, I, I have a couple of things I would recommend. First, as I've mentioned, when we talked about the regional sections, make sure you join your local section um, because the local section is like we just talked about is where a lot of this stuff's happening in an organized manner. And so join your local section and then look for what their outreach activities are and what they have going on. Um, just like any other program, they always need volunteers. And, and many times these outreach programs are limited by the number of volunteers they have. So they may get requests from schools to come in and talk, but we just don't have a volunteer to cover it. So, um, you can have a huge impact um, just by in being involved in your local section. And of course, it, it leads to professional fulfillment because you get to work together um, with colleagues and other section members for a common goal. And, and I, I think it, it gives you a lot of leadership training and, and how to work together and network. Uh, the second thing, of course, I think it goes without saying is, you know, I recommend everybody go to the Energy For Me website, um, look at what's available. Um, read about the activities and the tools that are available there, and then maybe start thinking about, um, you know, how, how are you going to engage your friends and family and, and really, you know, those that people that you meet every day and, and just help them understand what our industry does for the world. Um, the positive impact we have on humanity, um, the cool things we do, the high tech 
things that we uh, we take care of. And and most of all, you know, just be proud of what you are, who you are and what the impact that we have and what you're doing. And I think that that can be contagious. Um, so I think. I think people would be surprised at the impact they can have just kind of one person at a time, um, not just with our industry, but also, you know, and think about what you can impact on a student's career and, and future. Yeah, I think you're exactly right. It's it's the impact. And when we have our, our young professional members talking to high school students, so that's really um, like I, I said before, that's 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 passion about what they do. Yep. So I appreciate you talking about the subject. So what's on tap for May, Ter- uh, Terry? May. Well, first of all, Paige, uh, thanks again for being a host again. Uh, I always enjoy talking to you, Um, but also thank you for running this program. I know that you and your staff put in a lot of time and effort, um, and I've I've been at the workshops before at ATC and and OTC and things, and and I can see the passion in your staff and your team, and and it it just makes a huge impact. The teachers have a great time. So thank you for that. Um, as far as May goes, um, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about petroleum engineering programs, university collaboration, you know, kind of talk about the academia and the, and the university side of things and kind of where we're headed and what we're seeing and, you know, kind of how we, we impact that. Um, so that's what we'll do in May. Um, and I guess in the meantime, I hope that uh, this is useful and helpful to everybody. And I, again, I encourage you to go out and, and engage the public um, because by doing so, I think ultimately this is how we create our energy future. Thanks, Paige. Thanks, Terry. We hope you've enjoyed this edition of the SPE President's Podcast, Creating Our Energy Future with Terry Palish. New episodes are posted at the beginning of each month, complete with transcripts, on the Journal of Petroleum Technology website at jpt.spe.org.